Good morning, everyone. Good morning. As you can tell, we are in another location. We are at the church today going live. And we thank you all for joining us. We thank you for continuing to join us each and every Sunday, no matter where we are. So we welcome everyone that's joining us this morning. We want to welcome you from all over Houston and from out of state, even out of the country and across the world and the highways. And we, we come, all coming from your living rooms or your bedrooms or your dining room or wherever you are in your house, we may be outside viewing us. And we thank you for joining us. We thank you for the Facebook Church Hopper family for joining us this morning. So we thank everybody for joining us this morning. We're going to begin with a word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for your goodness today. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for all your blessings and your favor. And we ask you to come to service. The songs and prayers and shame every word. You be glorified. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When we do, we have come to this house. Yeah. 
who is the average of our deliverance, who leads us to find God's will in the word, who guides us to discernment, who compels us back to him. And one um, part of the vision statement that stood out to me today is the source of refuge. Existing as a safe haven for all who need to escape from the ills of the world and experience the peace that surpasses all understanding of this. And it brought to my mind the tragedies that we have experienced in the past two weeks. The Tops grocery store massacre and also the Uvalde um, Rob Elementary School. Um, we want to pray for those families. We may not be very uh, close to them in distance, but like I always say, there is no distance in prayer. So you can still be a source of refuge just by you praying for them, praying for the families, and even pray for the gunman's mom and the grandmother and the grandfather, everyone involved, the police officers, just pray for them. We want to continue to lift them up, all the family members, and even the, the, the massacre, that, massacre that happened in in New York at Topps uh, Grocery Store. I want to pray for them as well. I want to continue to remember them and to lift them up. We can be a source of refuge no matter where we are in the world. We, we can still be that source of refuge even through prayer. Amen. So let us take a time and moment to pray for all those things. Let's tell me, Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you today. We think that you are the Lord of hosts and everything is under your control. We lift up uh, those who have gone through tragedy and trauma around our country, Lord, in Buffalo, New York, and in Valley, Texas, Lord, we pray that you may have mercy on the families to comfort them with the comfort of the Holy Spirit. We pray that grace will be upon their families and their lives, Lord, we pray that you will deliver them from trauma, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, and that you cause them to be victorious. For your word declares, thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know, Lord, that you can help them. We can comfort them, we can guide them. We pray for our nation, Lord, that we would make wise choices. We pray for the Congress and the Senate, the President, Lord, that they would step in and intervene and make wise decisions and wise laws that will help save the people of this nation. And we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Have your way in our lives. Keep us safe. We give you all the praise and thanks. In Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. By way of announcement, we thank God for the Shadydale Church family and your love and your support. We thank you for all you've done to help us here at Shadydale and your giving. And you're not just giving to us, but you're giving to the kingdom of God. And so we give God thanks and praise today. So we honor God for all of his goodness. You can give at Shadydale in multiple ways, of course. You can come by church, put it in the mail slot in the front. We're at 4626 Strong Street, Houston, Texas, 77016. You can write to us at that same address. Shady Hill Church of God, 4626 Strong Street, Houston, Texas, 77016. You can give on our website, shadyhillchurch.org. Click on the donate tab and you can give you a PayPal or Givelify. Or you can give you a Givelify on your phone. So we thank you for your support and your giving. It has certainly made an impact. And so we give God thanks and praise for your giving. Enable us to still be able to worship together, even virtually. Virtually, so we give God thanks for that. Um, we're also looking forward to camp meeting this year in Hallisville. I know I've been announcing it uh, July 21st, 22nd, 23rd. Uh, for more information, you can visit us, the uh, Texas State Association Facebook page uh, for more information. Or you can visit the, the Texas State Association website, TSACOG, or uh, Texas State Association of Church of God. Dot org, T -S -A -C -O -G dot org. So, looking forward to the camp meeting. Uh, you can register and pay online as well. Or you can, for, for that information, do indeed go to the Texas State Association Facebook page and find out more, more information there. So, we're thanking God for all of His goodness and all of His favor in our lives. Anything you want to add there? No? He said everything. So we thank Shade Hill Church family for your love and support. And we thank all those who have joined us online this morning. I've seen uh, Betty Zeno, my mother in law. I've seen Sister Angel Williams, Sister Linda Greer. And my, one of my other cousins, Sherry Tucson, is on this morning. Cousin Delma Williams is on. I've seen um, Sherry Tucson is on. Sister Ingrid Hagen is on. Natalie Williams is on. One of my sorority sisters. Amen. So we thank God for all of you. Sister Faith is on. 
And so we thank God each one of you who joined us today. Pray that you've been blessed thus far. And we're going to sing a familiar hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Lord.
the last Sunday in May. Amen. We don't, we don't take it for granted, but we want to thank God. Thank Him for His goodness. Thank Him for His kindness and His favor. Turn in your Bible today as we continue on our new theme, The Good News Experience. Psalm number 40. Psalm number 40. We're going to begin reading that verse 5. Psalm number 40. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. Psalm number 40, verse 5. It reads, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works which you have done, and your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I were to declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book is written of me. I did like to do your will, O my God, and your law is in my heart. Now I proclaim the good news. Somebody say good news. Of righteousness and the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know, I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the great assembly. A New Testament text, of course, coming from the book of Mark, Mark chapter 1. Today we're going to begin reading at verse 16. Mark chapter 1, verse 16. Again, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it reads, And as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and, his, and Andrew his brother casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants, and went after him. This morning I read from you Psalm number 40, verses 5 through 10, and Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20. But the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and the understanding of the eternal word. I want to share with us briefly from the subject today, our theme, the good news experience, the call and your response. The call and your response. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness and your favor. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to see this beautiful day, oh God, a day we've never seen before. And, and the old saints would say, we'll never see again. I pray, Heavenly Father, your blessing your people today as we worship together and we worship together in your word. We worship you in song and in prayer and we worship you again in the sharing of your word. Now, Father, anoint me afresh that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, Lord, may it be acceptable in thy sight. For, O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. We ask all these blessings and more in the precious name, the powerful name, the saving name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So this morning is the good news experience, the call and your response, the call and your response. We've been sharing on this theme the last few Sundays, thinking about how news is spread. When we think about the word news and turn it on the television to watch the news, it seems like the first thing they, they say is, is some tragedy, some bad news. And it almost it seems as if the whole world is filled with bad news. But I want you to know today that God wants us to share the good news experience. This is why I'm coming to you with this theme, the good news experience from the gospel of St. Mark. Because I believe God wants us to be determined to share the good news of the gospel. To let the world know <laughs> that God has done and is still doing great things. He wants to do great things in your life and in my life and the lives of those around us. He wants to give us good news. As First Lady said in, during, our, during the devotional service today, we know so much tragedy has been happening around us. In New York, 
course, here in the state of Texas. We've seen, felt the emotions. Those emotions overflow. But I still want us to recognize that God still has good news. The fact that we're alive today, we can comfort one another in the ways that we've been comforted by God. And I hope that we've been praying and believing that God can still do great things. For in our Old Testament text of scripture, it says in Psalm number 40, verse 5, Many, O Lord, my God, are your wonderful works, which you have done. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I were to declare and speak of them, they are more than can be known. I want to ask, did anybody try to count their blessings today? To recognize how good God has already been in your life and mine? If we tried to count them and put them all in order, we still couldn't give them back to God in the same fashion, in the same list, in the same way he has done. So I want you to know that you need to experience the good news experience today. To think of God's goodness to you and I. Because God has done great things. It says sacrifice and offering you did not desire. My ears you have opened. Burnt offering and sin offering you did not require. Then I said, Behold, I come in the scroll of the book that is written of me. I delight to do your will, O God. O my God. Your law is written within my heart. I have proclaimed the good news of righteousness in the great assembly. Indeed, I do not restrain my lips. O Lord, you yourself know. See, God is reminding us in this text today that he has called as a calling and a purpose and meaning for your life and mine. And it is to do God's will. In other words, I want you to have, God wants us to have the good news experience. It says in verse 10, I have not hidden your righteousness within my heart. I have declared your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your loving kindness and your truth from the greatest sin. In these days and times, it seems as if, if bad news travels so far, that the good news seems to be hidden. And I want you and I today to make a commitment to, to establish in our hearts and in our minds that we will not hide the good news of the good things that God has done. And from time to time, from day to day in our lives, that we will, will use every means necessary to let the world know that yes, God is still doing great things. He's doing great things in your life. He's doing great things in mine. We ought not withhold the good news <laughs> that God has done. Because the world is, 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 is looking for good things. Because there's so much bad things around us. Now, some of the days, the call and your response. When we think about the word calling, especially when we think about church, the calling is when God calls somebody to do something special in life. It is an invitation. When you call someone, it's an invitation to let them know, you know, I need to hear from you. I'm inviting you to do something with me or for me in my life. It isn't, and when we think about the calling of God, it isn't the inner urge to a strong impulse to, to, as if it is made from heaven. And so heaven is calling you and I to do something great in this life. Heaven is calling you and I to move forward, to have the good news experience. And the question is, what is your response? Your reply, your act of responding. To make sure that you reply or respond to the, the stimulus, the call of God. The good news experience, the call and your response. Are you willing to hear the call of God today? And recognize that heaven wants you and I to do his work down here on earth. When you pray the Lord's Prayer, do you, do you think about what you're praying? When it says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as is in heaven. The good news experience, the call and your response. In our text of scripture, in the book of Mark, we see that Jesus made a call and his first disciples made a response. Let's look at this text today. There are three things in Mark chapter 1, verses 16 through 20 that I want to reflect on. And we consider the words, uh, servant, the call, 
and your response to call <laughs> and your response. Look at Mark chapter 1. The first thing I want to say this morning is Jesus has a purpose to fulfill. Jesus has a purpose to fulfill. The text says in Mark chapter 1, verse 16, and as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishing. I see in this text today that Jesus, after he had been tempted in the wilderness, he came out preaching the gospel, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He had a purpose to fulfill. And sometimes in our lives, when someone gives us an assignment, we think that the assignment is over the first day when we say yes. And we hope that, 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 that that's all we really have to do. But I want to say today that, that Jesus has a purpose to fulfill. And the fact that you and I are alive this morning means that we still have a purpose to fulfill. So Jesus didn't stop coming out of the wilderness. He kept moving forward. He kept moving in his purpose. And the good news is today that the calling of Jesus is still going forth today. There's a calling on your life. It may not be the same calling as some of the great preachers you see in the world. But still, there's a calling on your life to represent Jesus Christ wherever you go. Jesus has a purpose to fulfill. He wants men and women, boys and girls like you and me, to fulfill that purpose. Jesus was out fulfilling his purpose as he walked by the sea of Galilee. And I was, I was challenged one time by, by a leader in the church of God who said, Jesus didn't always make appointments, but as he went, he wanted to do good. <laughs> he went about doing good. He went about fulfilling his purpose in the world. What about you as you go about your day? Do you want to fulfill your purpose of doing good? Jesus didn't just stay in one place. Where he went, he went about doing good. And as he walked by the sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother. Do we ignore all the things around us when we go about our day? Do we realize that, 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 that God might have a, a divine appointment for you and I to fulfill? Jesus saw Andrew and his brother Simon. He didn't just ignore the people around him. Sometimes we have a, a way of ignoring what's going around, on around us. But we have a purpose to fulfill. And I know we can't speak to everybody. We can't meet everybody. But there's a time in our lives when we feel that, feel that tug in our hearts saying, speak to them, say something, smile. Let them know that there are good people in the world. I want to be able to answer that call and that purpose we ought to fulfill in this world. Jesus saw Simon and Andrew. They were fishermen. They were going about their daily lives. But the calling of God is for you and I to answer. You and I need to answer that call and make sure we're doing our part to make the world a better place. So that men and women, boys and girls can meet Jesus Christ and have this good news experience. Romans chapter 11 verse 29 says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. In other words, God is not going to change his mind about the calling and the purpose he has for your life and for mine. He wants you and I to answer the call. He wants you and I to say, yes, Lord, I'll go where you're sending me. I'll do what you want me to do. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 says, Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Behold, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. And I want us to think and recognize that God does have a calling <laughs> and a purpose for your life and mine. Just like Jeremiah, even in his mother's womb, he had a, a purpose to fulfill. I want us to be able to say, yes, Lord. I want to fulfill my purpose. Just like Jesus. He went about, as he was walking, he was fulfilling the purpose that God has for his life. The second thing I want to say in this text this morning is 
Jesus has a plan that you fit in. <laughs> Jesus has a plan that you fit in. Look at the text. Mark chapter 1 verse 17. It says, Then Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. <laughs> I want you to see that Jesus has a plan for you to fit in. Sometimes in life we have we do jobs that we don't like. Help me, Holy Ghost. And sometimes we have jobs that uh, that people put on us, saying, "Well, I want you to do this, and I want you to do that." But the reality is that God has a plan that fits our lives and our personalities. Sometimes we want to run away from what God has called us to. But I want you to see that when Jesus has a calling on your life. It's a calling that you fit in. Amen. Jesus has a plan that you fit in. So Jesus called Simon and Andrew. And they thought they were fishing for fish. Only. But Jesus had a calling that they would be fishers of men. The text says. Jesus said to them, follow me. And I will make you become fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. Jesus has a plan that you fit in. He wants us to be able to accomplish the purpose for our lives. So his plan includes us and it's something that you and I can do. John chapter 15 verse 16 says, you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. These things are command you that you love one another. See, Jesus has a plan that you and I fit in. He wants us to follow his plan and to trust the purpose and the plan that he has for our lives know that we fit into that plan. You ever tried that game where you tried to put a, a square peg in a round hole and it just doesn't fit? No matter how much you push and how much you bang and how much you press it in. But when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, we fit right into his plan. And I want us to say today, Lord, I want to fit into your plan. I want to be in my place. I want to do just what you've called me to do. The call and your response. The third thing, the last thing this morning is Jesus wants our positive response. Jesus wants our positive response. The text says in John, I mean Mark chapter 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 19. When he had gone a little farther from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who also were in the boat, mending their nets, and immediately called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the higher servants, and went after him. Jesus wants our positive response. Sometimes in life, we, we, we want to reject God. We want to say no, and, or say, well, we're, we're not good enough, or we don't have enough skill or talent. But in this text, we see more than once that when Jesus made the call, <laughs> he had a positive response. Amen? Simon and Andrew, James and John, they made the right response. The text says in both occasions, and immediately, they left their nets and followed him. And immediately he called them, and they left their father in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. I want to ask you today, are you willing to go after Jesus Christ? Go after his purpose and his calling on your life? Will you give a positive response to the call of God? Because Jesus is calling. You and I need to answer. We want to make the right response. To the call of God in our lives. And I can remember in my life that Jesus made a call in on my life. And in the beginning, I was, I was hesitant. I didn't want to accept that call. We see in this text today that Simon and Andrew, James and John, they made the right response. Amen. They decided <laughs> to follow Jesus. Hebrews chapter 3. 
Verse 12 says, Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily with this call today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. We have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the day, as in the, as in the rebellion. So today I want to, to make sure that we make the positive response. When Jesus calls us, we want to make the positive response because, you know, the heart can easily be hardened with time. Help me, Holy Ghost. The first time I remember hearing God call me uh, for ministry, I was five years old. And I just was like, there's no way that I can do that. <laughs> and the older I got, the more I wanted to just be a good deacon in the church. To help a preacher or a pastor or a leader. But God kept calling and saying, I want you to preach the gospel, preach the word. And I remember at one point I said, well, Lord, you know, if you want me to call me, me call to the ministry of the gospel, you got to come down here and tell me to my face. <laughs> help me, Holy Ghost. And one December, I was 19 years old. I was in Augusta, Georgia at a camp meeting. And I went to the altar when I, when the, when the preacher said they had been praying at the altar, a prophet stopped me right in front of everybody and pointed his finger in my face. He said, young man, you are denying your call to the ministry of the gospel. And you need to accept his calling on your life. And from that moment, I, I knew that God was serious. <laughs> And I want you to be able today to not allow the hardness of time to, 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 to put a seal over your heart. But I want you to let Jesus in and allow him to move and direct you in the direction he wants to take you. He wants you to have a positive response. So I love to see Adam, I mean Andrew, Andrew and Simon, and James and John. Make the positive response to Jesus Christ. To allow Jesus to direct them. And all he said was, come follow me. Because <laughs> when you follow Jesus, he has a great plan and a great purpose for your life. He'll lead and guide you all the way through. All the ups and downs of life. See, follow me comes with that promise. He's going to lead you all the way. Jesus, he won't lead you wrong. He'll lead you right. He'll lead you in the path of righteousness just for his name's sake. Because his name is Jesus, he'll lead you the right way. Because his name is Jesus, he won't let you down. Through all the ups and down, because his name is Jesus, he will take care of you. And I want somebody today to say, Lord, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to accept your purpose and your plan for my life. I'm going to accept your provision for my life. Because, Lord, you will make a way. He will make a way out of no way. And I'm standing here today as a witness that God can do anything. He can take a plain old country preacher son like me <laughs> and call me into the ministry of the gospel. And send me where he wanted to send me. And when I get there, he'll still keep making a way out of no way. I still had a roof over my head. I've had clothes on my back. I had shoes on my feet. He made a way for me to get a job and a car to drive. Even a, even a, even bless me to have a wife. Amen, somebody. All because I said, yes, Lord. I accepted the call and I responded. I am today where I am today because of his goodness. Because of his favor. Because of his work and purpose and plan in my life. And today, you need to accept that plan. Accept, that, accept the calling and the purpose that God has for your life and mine. To know that he wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. He wants to make a way out of nowhere. He wants to show you that, that this good news experience 
can be the best experience of your life. You don't have to worry. You can trust God. He will take care of you. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask for thing. Today, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can know him. It's as easy as ABC to admit that you need to repent of your sins. To be believed that Jesus died on the cross and rose again that your sin might be forgiven. And to cease confessing as your Lord and personal Savior. Why don't you pray a simple prayer with me? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your witness today. We thank you for Jesus Christ, for his blood and his sacrifice. Lord, I repent of my sins. And I believe that Jesus Christ is your son and he died on the cross and he rose again and my sin might be forgiven. Lord, forgive me of my sin come into my heart. Lord, I thank you for saving me and I confess you now as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. Fill me with the Spirit and I'll follow you all the way. And I thank you for this. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Today if you pray that prayer and you're a child of God, you got to believe and confess and continue to live and serve Him. You might say, well, Pastor, I'm already saved, but, you know, sometimes I don't want to always do I don't feel like I can do all the things that God wants me to do. I want to challenge you today to set the call and the response. To respond in a positive way today. Jesus has a purpose for you to fulfill. He wants men and women, boys and girls everywhere to, to know the good news. And he has a plan where you can fit in. It's just right for you. You don't have to be someone else. Just be yourself. Jesus wants our positive response today. He wants you and I to say yes. Yes, Lord, I'll follow you. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for this message reminding us that there's a call and we need to respond. You have a call and a purpose for our lives. I pray today that we would know that you your purpose is real, that the good news of the gospel might be shared. And I pray that we, the people of God, will share that good news. Help us to know that we can fit into your plan, Lord. You're not asking us to be someone else. You're asking us to be who you made us to be. You formed us. And you breathe into us the breath of life. And we become living souls. And you have a plan for our lives. Help us to fit into that plan and do your will, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Most of all, they able to respond in a positive fashion. As Simon and Andrew and James and John, they immediately responded by saying that they would follow you. Help us today to follow you, Lord. And to go everywhere you lead us. Have your way. In your name, all the praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray you've been blessed by the message today. As you see and know that you can answer the call today. The call that God has for your life and your mind. You got this. Thank you for joining us this morning and had me thinking this morning. The good news experience, the call and your response. So we can respond in many ways, but he wants a positive response from us. And he has a plan that we fit in. Sometimes when we try to go shopping, I know it's female for shoes, we know they're too small. We try, we try to fit in them. We try to put our feet in them, knowing we can't fit them. We have to get the ones that are the right fit for us. So there is a plan that's the right fit for us. I'm not really preaching this sermon, but it, it makes perfect sense. And Jesus did have a purpose to fulfill, and so do we. So we thank you for um, joining us. And, and what will we do with this message? What have, have we been doing with the messages that we've been hearing? We hope and we pray that we will all share this, we'll tell someone about it, and that we will apply it to our hearts, our minds, and, and apply it to our lives. So we thank you all for joining us today. Amen. Let's look Lord this message. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Lord of God, the of the Holy Spirit, may rest, rule, and abide with us. We know that forevermore. Amen. 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 Amen